I want to talk about the encrypted visibility engine today. It's a new feature in release 7.2. It was actually released first in 7.1, but it was experimental at that point. Now it is out of the experimental status. So let's take a look at what this does and how it works. So first of all, the feature will come disabled. To enable it, you want to go to your access control policy. So I'm here on the access control policy page, which says policies, access control, and my one little access control policy here. So when you edit that, you'll find this on the advanced tab. So over here on the advanced tab, way down here in the right, you'll see the encrypted visibility engine. Now mine's turned on already, uh, of course, because I turned it on, but when you turn it on, let's pretend you're turning it on here, you'll get this dialog here and it says, you know, about encrypted visibility engine. And it's gonna tell a little bit about what it does, but it's gonna remind you that to, for, to be effective with this, you should have, uh, make sure your uh, vulnerability databases database sorry is updated so we've got here some instructions on how to go and, and schedule that so that you have a constant task running to check for new vdbs and download those uh, so you probably already have that but if you don't make sure you enable the, the automatic vdb updates also the cisco success network is something we really like you to turn on it helps with our telemetry for this uh, product so uh, i'll show you where that is in a second here so after you turn it on then you're gonna save your policy and deploy it. Now again, I've already done that, I've already turned it on. So let's go over and take a look at that success network really quickly where that is. So that's under Integration Secure X in the release 7.2. So on this page, you can see a number of things about cloud integration. One of those is the, the uh, success network over here on the right. Now I've already enabled this. Now when you, when you install your FMC for the first time, you get asked this question, would you like to enable a success network? And if you just click through that and said no, uh, you might want to think about that again here. And again, we'd encourage you to enable that. It really helps the telemetry and helps us uh, make sure you get a better product uh, in the future based on what we're seeing you know, on our customer sites. And, and don't worry about what's being sent up there. No personal information is sent or identifiable information. And if you want to find out what is being sent, you can even click the sample data there and you can see that. But really highly uh, recommend you turn on that success network. Okay, so once EVE is turned on and deployed, uh, well, let's take a look at the events. Now I'm going to go over to the unified events. I actually have a tab already open up here with unified events. Um, that, I just like the unified event view. So I'm popping over here to unified. So I like it because it's easy to customize. And I've customized the columns to show you the encrypted visibility uh, data here. Again, I did it over here on the left by clicking here and just selecting the columns I want. You can search the columns. Really, really nice to be able to search. For instance, I want to search for all the encrypted visibility columns. I can just you know start with ENC and you have all these encrypted visibility um, columns you can add. I just added two of those, the confidence score and the process name. Haven't done anything with the threat stuff at this point. Here's how it looks with some connection events. So I'm logging, I'm doing full connection logging here just so you can get an idea of what it looks like. You can see we have here a process confidence score and a process name. Uh, it's important to understand the difference in how these things work so you can uh, get the best utilization out of this feature. So first thing is the visibility, the EVE process name, there are five or 6,000 EVE processes that we can identify. Um, so that's what you're seeing over here. The actual name that was identified by Eve, the process that was identified. Now the thing is, not every one of these processes corresponds to an application. And even if it does, it has to have a certain uh, confidence that the process identified is the process that we think it is. Now what you'll see, it's kind of a, a rule of thumb is 90%. Uh, it varies somewhat per application, but um, if you see a process confidence of 90% or higher, then you can be pretty sure that the client application that's been selected here is from EVE. Now, the client application doesn't only come from EVE. Say, it's a, if it's port 80 traffic, we'll get that through regular um, inspection of the traffic. But EVE it will populate this field, the client application field, with that TLS data. And that comes from the client hello. So we're talking here about outbound traffic from your network. So that's the traffic we're looking at with Eve. So it's the client application or client process we're identifying. Now, if you look here, this says Chromium, 83%, but for the client application, it says SSL client. So that's kind of a generic, hey, we know it's an SSL client. We're not sure which one. If you go on down, I have some Chromium down here that says Chrome. So it's not just the fingerprint. Again, there's other data around that uh, that we're looking at to identify that process. But you can see these particular connections here, they've identified as Chrome um, based on that 
Eve process name. So if you had a rule in your access control policy to allow our block or do something with Chrome, it would act on these connections. So let's refresh this since we got any new, new connections coming in here. So uh, so here we are with any connect. So for instance, uh, the encrypted visibility process name here is any connect. We're 100% sure. So yeah, we're going to call that any connect. So when you're looking at that, that may answer some questions. I was like, hey, wait a minute, why is this, uh, this you know identified as just SSL client? When why is that? What's going on? So well, in this case, there was no fingerprint we identified with that. So Eve didn't contribute at all to that. So we just had to go with the generic SSL client. Okay, from here, let's go over to the dashboard. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna right click on dashboard, open in a new tab, and let's take a look at the Eve dashboard. So usually start with the summary. I'm gonna go over to the application statistics dashboard. And there's a tab on this dashboard I've already been at once, that's why it's defaulting here. It, the called the encrypted visibility engine. So after it's run for a while, and I've run this for a while, obviously it's not going to you're not going to see it immediately when you turn it on. You have to let it run. Um, it's going to collect the connections based on the process name, so you can get some idea here of what you've been seeing. So obviously there's something out there running a process, uh, a Python client, that's the majority of the connections. And if you if you noticed in my unified, you actually filtered those out because there were so many of them. But you can see based on connections what we're seeing any connect chromium firefox etc so it's just a, a real small lab network so not a lot of processes you'll have and then we have a threat confidence again we'll get back to threat in a little bit right now we're not really doing much with the threat because that is really under uh, a development at this point we actually can identify some malicious traffic in uh, this uh, via eve but at this point we're not doing anything with it other than tagging it with a uh, a threat confidence and maybe a process name of, of malware. Okay, so let's take a look at how we would uh, use this in an access control policy. So let's go from here over to policies, access control. Now the thing about en enabling the encrypted visibility engine is you don't have to do anything fancy in your policies after you turn it on. After you turn it on, it'll just start working. It'll just start identifying those client applications from the e fingerprint. So if you already had rules for those processes, they would actually start working better. Now I'll tell you, I'll show you what I mean by working better. So I've got a rule in here I've got disabled right now. I'm going to take a look at it and I'm going to enable that rule. So this is a rule called uh, block wget. So I want to block and reset uh, wget. I don't want people using wget or processes using wget for whatever reason on this part of the network. So wget is the command line way to pull down you know, web pages. So right now it's not enabled, so I'm going to enable that. So it's, I'm going to block and reset those. I'm doing it based on the application. So let me show you where you would find these Eve applications here, what the difference is you'll see. So if I click the Applications tab, so right now, again, this rule works because I've picked wget as the application. So how do you know it's an Eve application? I mean, how do you know it's an application that Eve can identify? So on the left here, under Application Filters, I'm going to roll up all these different categories. At the bottom, there's one called Tags. So if you scroll down on the tags, you'll get to one called Encrypted Visibility Engine. So if you check that, now you're seeing only the filters or the applications that are uh, based on the Encrypted Visibility Engine. Now, that's not all they're based on because, uh, it, as I'll show you in a second here, not every one of these is encrypted all the time. Um, so if, if we can do deep packet inspection on the flow, say it's decrypted or if it's an uh, unencrypted flow itself, then we won't use Eve, obviously. We can identify these other ways. But these are the ones we can identify that those processes, remember the processes? This is the process that maps over to an application. Now, uh, if I go to the next page of this 159, scroll down, you can see we have wget. Now, it's grayed out here because I've already added it. But that's where I grabbed it from. Um, again, I didn't have to grab it here. I could have just searched for wget and thrown it over there. Um, but uh, it happened to be have that tag encrypted visibility engine and if you click on the eye icon over here for a particular application you notice that it does list all the attributes of that application and one of those is tags and under tags you'll see encrypted visibility engine there so uh, this is how we know now this list of 159 applications that's going to grow like I mentioned, there are like five or 6,000 of those processes we can identify, but only a handful of applications at this point 
but that's going to grow rapidly and again with your telemetry it'll grow even faster all right so that's what i did for the rule pretty straightforward i'm going to save that and block w again now uh, let's save this so i'm going to save and deploy deploying is so easy now okay deploy just completed so let's pop out to our demo now what i've got is i've got a lab environment out here i'm going to pull that up here all right it's my lab and i've got my ubuntu box here now i can browse from here with uh, say chrome and i can go to uh, i don't know carfax or whatever right so easy right so that's you should see those events with the building. We'll look at those when we get back to the uh, events here in a second. But I blocked wget, so I shouldn't be able to get there. So if I type wget, try to go to secure Carfax, hmm, unable to establish SSL connection. Hmm, bummer. wonder why. Well, it's because I blocked it. So let's go back to the FMC and take a look at that. I'll go over to my events. Okay, I get to my event view here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filtering capabilities of this uh, view here. So I'm going to go to the source IP. This is the one I want, 10.1.184. That's my uh, lab test out there. So I'm going to add that inclusion to the filter, 10.1.184. Apply that. Now I'm only going to see the events from that IP. Okay, so I get here. Now I've got, here's that block, right? So um, here's some web traffic I did. Here's the Chrome traffic I went and uh, downloaded some stuff. Yeah. And then uh, after that, I tried to run wget, and here's the uh, the block. Now I've actually got um, the reason why there's an allow event there as well is because I have actually two interfaces on this firewall, and that rule I rule only works on my inline interface because that's why I wrote the rule. Uh, and so this passive interface actually saw wget, but it didn't block it but the inline interface saw wget and did block it. So that's what happened there, we blocked it. And you notice the process name wget, 100% for Eve, process name wget. Now, this rule would not have worked, sorry, the one below here for the drop, either one of them actually, but this rule, this drop rule especially, would not have worked if I did not have Eve enabled. Um, now, to prove that to you, I'm gonna go and disable Eve and we're gonna watch it not work. So, go back out to policy here. And I'm going to go to Advanced. I'm going to turn off Eve. Save that. I'm going to deploy. Okay, I'm back. The deploy is almost finished. We're at 83%. We're waiting patiently. There we go. Okay, complete. It just finished. All right, so let's go back out to our lab here. This is where we just blocked on wget, the SSL connection. So let's try it again, wget, HTTPS, uh, boom, grabbed it, no problem. But I still have the rule there, right? So what if I tried wget, HTTP, with only two P's, T's. So it'll actually try to make the connection first with HTTP, and it's failing, and it's failing because in clear text, we can still identify wget, but we are now no longer able to identify it. All I have to do is put an S on there, and I can grab it, no problem. So in the previous releases, if you didn't have Eve, you, you could not stop wget uh, specifically with uh, encrypted connections, but now you can because we can identify that process with Eve. So that's uh, kind of the, the bottom line key of how that works. now. Again, with malware, uh, what will happen is, let's go back over to the FMC here. Now, the encrypted vis visibility process name for malware is a process called malware, so I happen to know that. So I'm going to search on that right now. So I'm going to include this. It's actually called underscore malware. And we'll click Apply, and it will load the... Malware event. So these are from a PCAP I played back, which was collected from a threat grid malware sample. So you can see there's a couple of events here. I played the PCAP twice. If I expand that, you can see the malware process. 90% process confidence that that's malware. Client application is SSL client. 
And to be clear, there are malware fingerprints in the VDB today, but they are few and far between. So at this point, the function of Eve is to identify client applications, which you can then use within your access control rules to uh, identify those clients and make those decisions and allow a block, whatever you want to do with those there. In the future, look for the capabilities to be expanded with the malware identification. We're going to grab those malware fingerprints from our malware analytics or formerly threat grid cloud and bring those in via machine learning. And so we can look for a future uh, potentially of being able to identify that malware within TLS traffic without decryption. And that is the real value. One of the most exciting things about Eve, in my opinion, for the future is to be able to identify that malware based on that TLS fingerprint without decryption. So that's the encrypted visibility engine overview. I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can utilize Eve in your deployment to identify those client applications and take whatever enforcement actions you want. And as always, happy snorting.